Let's now talk about one of the greatest albums of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back to taking a nap. You guys have fun. <laughs> Jacob, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, the Devil Wears Prada have released their newest album, Color Decay. Wow. <laughs> See, I feel like I don't want Jake to go away because we need to explain to him why this album is so good. That's I'm what I'm saying. In bed, it's too late. <laughs> He's gone. My <laughs> oh, man's gone. In I the actually, distance, we Justin, hear him. you said you listened to this, right? Yeah, I wasn't feeling it. <sighs> Did you have any that you enjoyed? Uh salt. salt. I'll take That's one. It. That was the that was the song I feel like we were all in agreement. Yep. Uh, for yeah, it was, it was the one single that we were all it in agreement for. I believe in salt supremacy. <laughs> Jake, you actually saved a couple, right? Yeah, uh, four out of twelve, I think. It's what salt noise broken exhibition. No, it's exhibition salt broken and fire. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So basically, the three softest songs and the opener. <laughs> huh. But I will say there are some other mm -hmm. redeemable aspects. Uh, I think the chorus in Watchtower is still really good. Uh, having gotten to hear the that one live when I saw them opening for Bare right. earlier this year, definitely has it kind of stuck in my head to a bit more of an extent. Uh, and I remember liking parts of Noise, just not the unclean parts, which is where most of my faults come with for this album. Yeah. To probably no one's surprise that I don't particularly like the uncleans here. I, as much as this is one of my least favorite albums I've heard this year, because it's just wow. sonically... It's just, <laughs> sonically oh i'm just my. not liking i'm not yeah. liking the vocals very much i came out of this enjoying it more than i expected to i very contrasting statement i just said but it's true so i also we're, came out of this enjoying gonna, it more than i expected to we yes me too <laughs> um me too. so jake jake mentioned noise real quick noise is the best song in this album right sonically yes. sonically yes objectively cancer 25 yes yeah okay. yeah, yeah actually that's yeah. exactly it yeah yeah okay <laughs> um i have 25 but cancer is a close second yeah so all that to say that the lyricism on this album is flawless i have listened to this less than jacob i would say i've probably given it a full run through 15 16 times I have yet to find a single fault. Not one. Yeah, there's there really isn't. There's there's just nothing. I think that this year in particular, in terms of their respective genres, we have had a lot of defining scene albums that I think are going yeah. to move the scene forward. Yeah. Um I think this um bad omens i think stand atlantic for pop punk um north lane comes to mind it feels like that this year scene music in general is going through like a renaissance almost where we're getting a lot of really strong really defining albums that are going to mark the next 10 years of how things sound i had a revelation jacob the other day like yeah. literally maybe two three days ago about why i like this so much and it's because because i i full disclosure i do not have a single other prada song saved besides all 12 on this album what except for breath? one that's what the one that i was going to mention <laughs> and it's because i was listening to it and i'm like the lyricism here works so well with the uncleans that i yes. was i wish every prada like song sounded like notes. this <laughs> <laughs> And so this album is effectively that how their sound from Sour Breath expanded into an album and then executed flawlessly. I, I think you got elements of it on the act as well, but yeah. it didn't come with the lyricism right. and the, the, right. the sadness. Mm -hmm. This leans more into, 
I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I've listened to a lot of Prada projects, but uh, you know, I, you're more much more familiar with the band than me. That this album leans way more into the cleans than I feel like any of their previous yeah. albums have, yeah. and it lets the way that the uncleans come across so emotionally with the lyricism, yeah. it, it bolsters them to come across even better. I yeah, this album instrumentally vocally lyrically it's just like this one two three gut punch of impact in a way that i feel like a lot of other albums this year have succeeded maybe as strongly vocally or as strongly instrumentally maybe not quite as strong lyrically i think that lyrically this is the best album i've heard this year um but that not no other album really has all of that together yeah. And this album, it just feels like a 10 out of 10 across the board, which is, I can't remember the last time that I heard an album no, like this. I, I don't, I don't think I have either. Like, this is, like you said, I think the, with the balance of vocals, the mics, the unclean vocalist sounds a lot more like desperate almost mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and i think it, that in combination with the the lyricism is what makes it yeah absolutely um i think 25 is probably the best example of that yeah i i never don't get boost boost gumps goosebumps when boost i gumps. when i hear gumps. that man bro <laughs> shit <laughs> But like hearing that first verse and the that way 20, that <laughs> the way that it just sounds so raw when he says twenty five, mm. it's chilling. I mean, this this is an album that I feel like you can appreciate objectively, but the more shit that you've been through, the yeah. better this album becomes. <laughs> and, and also, like, like each song. Is like has like a different reason to be like mm, sad. Mm -hmm. Like you could go to yeah. like pick like like there's a song for like anxiety. There's a song for like relationships. There's a song for which loneliness. one's the anxiety one? I need to re-listen to it. Um, I would say noise. Yeah. Okay, I need to re-listen to it. Yeah, definitely. And even like the death of a friend or loved one, which we talked about is cancer. Each song is so individual. But it all flows together like so well in the in the yeah. context of the album. I've I I don't ever feel like I'm listening to the album's runtime when I hear it. And it's not even like the runtime is long, but I go from song to song and I get to cancer and I'm like, wait, it's over already? Yeah. Because I was just so engrossed in it every single time I listen. Um and yeah, yeah. On the contrary, uh, just going to pop in real quick. Uh, while I listened to this album, I had a lot of enjoyment uh, loving my cat who was taking a nap on my bed. And I got a lot more enjoyment out of playing with my cat than listening to the middle of this album. Man, okay. come on, man. Um, what a good cat, thing though. I wanted to say... It was a good cat. Is the singles... I feel like did not paint what this album would be like no. at all. No. And I honestly love it for that. Like we got a glimpse of it with salt, but you kind of like think, think it's like a one-off kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the album and all of a sudden the album artwork makes total sense. Oh yeah. And actually like it was a really pleasant surprise that the singles didn't represent the album. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. At Sacrifice even I wasn't super high on it as a single yeah. in the context of the album. Pff, forget about it. Like yeah, I, yeah, like like yeah, even like the single sonically, like I mentioned mm -hmm. or we you mentioned Sacrifice, um Sacrifice Watchtower and even even Time to an extent. Yeah. Uh all I was like eh this is but then you hear it in the album and you listen to the lyrics and it's like wow, this all makes sense. Nothing, you know, I, I feel like, you know, you mentioned um, with that there's different 
lyric themes, but that it all comes together no matter you know what mm -hmm. the theme is. It comes together a cohesive album. And I feel like I just want to kind of call back to how we just talked about Until I Wake, that it dealt with different things, but I feel like with Until I Wake, you could have switched any of those songs around for the most part into a different like track listing, and it would have been fine. I don't think you could rearrange a single song on here. Mm -hmm. I think it just works perfectly as it, especially the way that the vocals kind of trade off on the last four, where you have something as as raw and unclean focus as 25, followed by the mellow kind of renewing fire where it's cleans into uncleans and hallucinate into yeah. mostly cleans and cancer. I, I love that like I think fire is the softest song on the album. And then it goes yeah. straight into hallucinate, which is yeah. the heaviest song on the album. And to me, that represents the like the two polar I, I don't want to say opposites, but the two sides of the feelings of this album yes. that the cleans and uncleans can mean two different things at any given point, but they can also work in tandem to create just like the greatest thing you've ever heard. <laughs> Noise. God, I want to give a special shout out to Exhibition too, because I think that breakdown with the mid breakdown call out of step back yeah yeah is like my favorite mid breakdown call out i've ever heard <laughs> there is nothing that gets me more hype than hearing that step back in the middle of it i love it for me um, oh sorry go ahead well i was just gonna say that i think too exhibition exhibition um concrete jungle and dream state by day seeker all exist in the same state of existence for me in the sense that they all have this same kind of breakdown that feels like it's chugging along rather than a drop, if that yes. makes sense. And I think that that's probably one of my favorite trends of the album openers that I've, it's like to come out of this year and that music evolution. Exhibition is probably my second favorite song on here and I wish I had more to say about it. But even it being my second favorite song, I don't have much to add. And I've again i think that's more a testament to how much you guys have fell in love with this album and just that there's so much you guys have already said that there's not much that someone like me can't add at this point i think sonically my favorite moment on the album is um in noise mm. where it, it it's like the breakdown it's like i can't sleep the sky is falling rest yes the noise is calling and then after that cycle they sit repeated a bunch of times it goes straight into the chorus yes yeah noise in general just has so many of my favorite moments on here i think it's got my favorite chorus especially the second half of the chorus it goes we never even know what we could have been you know when he kind of raises that note just a little bit yeah but i i want to point out like lyrical moments from this album but there's yeah. way too many well <laughs> I, i've got you know? i've got 25 mm -hmm. and i think i gotta die this is the, the song i want to dive into a little bit lyrically yeah, just for, for the it. review where the way i interpret it personally is like uh, it's like a broken relationship and one party's leaving the other and the perspective is this uh, of the song is of the person who got who was left alone and they're dwelling on hoping for this person to come back and it's a battle with those like mixed feelings of like letting go and clinging on to hope and mm -hmm. then eventually letting that person go and accepting it's over but not regretting the time you spent with them because like it was it taught you a valuable lesson or um and it's i don't know if it's like it's a really complex feeling that i'm trying to describe no but it makes sense and, and it's it go 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 sorry and yeah, I feel like I'm not doing it a justice, but I think the way that uh, Prada does it is like so, so masterfully done and mm. it resonates so well with me. I think you and I interpreted 25 in distinctly opposite ways. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> how'd you interpret it then? Well, I interpret it from the perspective of the person who got left rather than the person yeah, who yeah. did the leaving. No, no, I I interpreted the, the person oh, who, oh, who oh. got left. Oh, that, okay, I, I'm with you. Sorry, sorry. I, yeah, yeah. No, I that I think the line for me there. We already mentioned the first verse, but the agony on by April the snow was melting. Mm. 
Ugh, wow. <laughs> this whole album is likes one to big do, wow. Do that like like with um I can't remember what the lyric was, but something about like in October. In, in the last track of uh the act, this I think it's Spiderhead, the they mentioned October. It's like Prada really likes to mention months of the year, don't they? <laughs> well, and I think that allows because I, I, it's almost like a catch-all, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I, f- I feel the same way about um, a garden song called Inside that's kind of like my go-to whenever I'm feeling depressed or anxious, that it mentions November. And it's kind of like, well, if something didn't happen for you regarding the relationship in that month, you can still relate to the sentiment of the song. But yeah. by giving somebody a specific month, you open yourself up to this whole wide group of listeners that could say, oh, shit, I remember this happened to me in October, or I felt the relationship yeah, yeah. falling apart in April. And then you connect to it on a whole new level, well, just opens up this whole well, new world. For me, it did happen in April, so oh, it's kind of like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could be here for hours. Yeah, I, I could, yeah, I, I, I could I, as well. I don't want to be for the sake of, of runtime, but... I we're gonna be talking about this again. Well, yeah. <laughs> from the by the end of the year, and I truly think that this is. I mean, we're only two years into the decade, but this is easily gonna be one of the greatest, most defining albums to come out of the scene this decade, and has easily worked its way into my top ten favorite albums of all time. Oh, yeah, I mean, for truly, sure. A perfectly flawlessly executed album that's really unlike anything else I've heard this year. I, I know we wanted to end, but I think we have to talk about cancer. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's a that's a good note to end it on. The closer the album, the closer the discussion. I, God, I don't want to fuck it up. So let me pull the exact thing. Um, I hope that it's cancer and not something else because I don't need any more things I don't want to talk about. That at this point you're so sick of having to think about all the things that have gone wrong or that are wrong with you and at this point you're just hoping that it's cancer so it'll kill you so you don't have to deal with the agony of living through all those things anymore like just such a we interpreted it different ways well how did you how did you interpret it well i well i read the what the song was about so i kind of cheated but (laughs) um so you're telling me i'm wrong (laughs) well no no because it's all subjective just talking with you yeah it's like a a story about a a hero of the keyboardist he wrote the song the keyboardist Mm -hmm. wrote the song and he died of an illness and they're in the they don't know how he died and basically he's the keyboardist's vote is hoping that he didn't die he died of natural causes mm. rather than he killed himself or something like that because he struggled with mental illness and so it, the whole song is about like hoping that they died of natural causes rather than mm. than mental illness i remember reading that lyric of i hope it's cancer and mm. as someone that has only listened to this album through once, because as I said, not really my thing. My, it requires context. Yeah. <laughs> it really my, does. <laughs> my rough interpretation of just reading that line by itself, my assumption was that like, I hope it's cancer in the sense of like, I hope that you died to something like to something that I know rather than the unknown. Mm-hmm. Cause like if yeah. someone dies from cancer, that's like something that's a lot more normal. Whereas, like, if someone passes away and you don't really know why, like, you're kind of wondering, maybe I wish it was just cancer so I knew how they went. Yeah. I, I have no idea if that's accurate at all. That's just my yeah, very, it's pretty close, yeah. interpretation. Yeah. For what the album is meant to me, and I think this really influenced the way that I hear cancer, but I think that because of what it means to me, I my interpretation of it makes the song all the more impactful for me when it's already like a you know everything leading up to it and then getting to that i mean it's it's an impactful enough and emotional enough song as it is when you listen to the 11 tracks before it and you finally get to it it's just the most yeah. raw cathartic emotional experience i this album is an experience truly yeah. I mean, I, I hear some of these songs in my playlist and I'm like, okay, they're good. But then I hear them in the album and it's just cold yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah. 
Or it's definitely an made, album. You listen to eleven songs and you get to track twelve and you're numb to everything you're hearing. <laughs> or you mean tapped out in track three. Man. Damn. Two you're doing yourself a disservice. Mind. And that that raw emotional outro. Yeah. Yeah, just oh this album's a fucking masterpiece. I think I just talked myself into making it my album of the year. <laughs> <laughs>